coach LZ. You're entering your third season kind of with the opportunity to build your own roster this time. What was the main trait you kind of looked for in building this new team? Yeah, you know, our staff, we were very intentional. Um, I was looking for culture players, um, someone who had high character off the court, but also on the court, a winning mentality. Um, I needed some players that were tough, um, that were coachable and played with a high motor. I don't want to figure out if you have a heartbeat. I have too much energy along with my staff. So someone who played with a high motor on both sides of the court, um, but then someone who was relentless uh, defensively. That was important to me. Gabrielle Lewis, the next. Um, could you talk a little bit about Ryan Howard and you know seeing her and her rookie season with the dream um, and you know just really dominating that rookie class? Uh, what was that like watching her? You know, I was so proud of Ryan and what she um, has accomplished uh, in the WNBA. Um, she took the WNBA by storm, but we were not surprised. If you listen to any of my press conferences, I kept saying she will be a better pro than a college um, athlete because they couldn't load up on her. She could uh, spread the floor and let her do uh, what she does best. But she is a 6'2 guard um, that is strong, that shoots threes like people shoot free throws, but her basketball IQ um, is unbelievable. So watching her do what she does best um, obviously, we are very happy at Kentucky, but it warms my heart as a coach because she put a lot of work in. Back in the front. Speaking of Ryan, what has it been like building an identity uh, on this team now without Ryan? Well, people keep asking, you know, what do you do without Ryan Howard? Obviously, you don't replace a Ryan Howard. She is a once in a lifetime uh, type of player that we had the honor to coach um, at Kentucky, but now we do it collectively. Um, you know, I return five core players that understand the standard and expectations at Kentucky, but they've also been in the, the trenches and had to produce um, in big games. Um, one of them, Jada Walker, you know, we baptized her by fire um, a year ago and she answered the call. Um, and I don't know, Robin Benton can put the ball uh, put the basketball in the hoop and uh, so proud of her for stepping up uh, this year to have a Blair Green return to the floor. Um, she is a sniper from the three-point line. Uh, so we will do it collectively. Back to the front. Uh, there's been, other than just Howard, there's been quite a bit of turnover um, out of the team. Can you talk about how uh, you have handled that, but also how the players who um, continue with the team and handle like that? You know, culture wins. At the end of the day, culture wins. There are standard expectations, and that's a non-negotiable for me. And so uh, we have had 10 amazing additions um, to our program, six talented freshmen. Now, they don't know what's happening right now, but they are very talented. Um, but for uh, big transfers, um, Maddie Shear is one of those. She has the it factor for her to come home um, and play um, at the University of Kentucky. She makes us different, um, along with um, Asia Petty, who's a, a physical post. Um, so everyone keeps saying, you're young. We're relatively young. We have nine vets um, and six freshmen. Um, so, you know, you figure it out from there. Wilson Jackson, Sports Illustrated. Coach, you just alluded to it. Um, you talked about the transfers that you just brought in. Like, how do you combine them with the players that you brought back and really, like, continue to change the culture of the team for this season? Well, the culture's already changed. Um, and it's been, the standard has been what it is. Um, but for this season, um, you have, like I said, you have five vets that understand my, my standard and expectation and our style of play. Um, but what I've told the players, at the end of the day, we all have one thing in common. We love Kentucky and we want to win. Um, so, you know, we spent a lot of time doing team building um, in the off season, whether it was get to know, um, whether it was boxing, but, you know, our staff is committed to spending a lot of time with our players, but they are here and they want to win, they want to work, and this is probably one of the most competitive teams um, that I've coached. Back 
in front. Let's split the difference. Let's we'll start here. The theme for this year is built different. Built different. How did you guys come up with that? You know, when you think about losing a Ron Howard and, you know, what people expect from us, it's, we don't have a superstar, but collectively, um, but any deficiencies that this team has, we feel like as a coaching staff, we can overcome if we have a built different mentality. Um, and that's just a toughness that you bring, the style of play defensively, um, being able to do things that other people don't want to do in order to win. So every day we approach practice that way, we'll approach games. And I will tell you, having 15 has brought everyone's best because that competitive spirit. And I've been very transparent with them. I'm probably going to do a 10 player rotation. You can play your way in or you can play your way out. There is one ball, there's five positions, there's 40 minutes. My job is to put a team on the floor and the best people that give us a chance to win. Um, and they've really bought in uh, to that mentality. Very good. Hi, Coach. Hi. I'm Ashley Woods from the Crimson White. Uh, collegiate women's basketball is growing at a fast pace. Is how exciting of a time it is to be a coach and just being able to empower women to be a presence on the court, but also off the court? Great question. I'm, I'm so excited about the growth of our game um, and we need to continue to grow it. Um, but I'm all about women empowerment. Um, that's what our program is built um, upon. We got to make sure that our players are successful, not only on the court, but off the court uh, with the name, image and likeness. They're building their brand now um, and they are learning how to manage their money, speaking, social media. Um, so all of it's all encompassing. So I'm just so proud of what we do at the University of Kentucky uh, to make sure that our ladies are prepared for the game of life. Up front. Um, earlier you said that culture wins and that's a non-negotiable. Has the culture changed, do you think, significantly in the last year as an extension of what it was last year? Or do you feel like things are really different culture-wise? Well, I think it, the culture has always been set um, from when I've taken the job, um, but I do think it'll be an extension of, of last year um, as far as they understand what it is. Um, and I don't have a whole bunch of rules, but the ones that I have, you will follow, but it's more of an expectation on how you would conduct yourself on and off the court. Back up front. Um, how did the momentum of the end of last season, how would you describe how you're carrying it into this one? You know, I think that there's a lot of confidence um, in myself, the staff. Uh, we went through a lot last year. It was an uh, up and down season, but for it to end with an SEC championship and for the five players returning, uh, they have so much confidence and they understand what the blueprint looks like. We had to work. Um, everything revolves around work roll up your sleeves and go to work. But the momentum has been unbelievable. It's a lot easier to go in a recruit's house when you're winning and you have a net around your neck um, and they're seeing you on national television. But the exposure that it gave our program has really helped us in recruiting, but also as far as staff and players, confidence. In the back medal. Sinegay with KSR, you've got three sets of uh, players. You've got the returners, the transfers, and the rookies. Is there a way, different way you have to coach all of them or maybe go about how you coach them? Yeah, there are three groups, uh, but you can't coach any of them the same. You just have to be fair. Um, but it also goes back to our staff. We invest taking time to spend with our players off the court, whether it's a film session, whether it's taking them to get a smoothie, whether it's walking them to class or going to work out when they work out, investing time to get to know. So then you know how to push their buttons and they also know you. Um, so we coach them so hard, but they know it's coming from a place of love to not only get them better, but also to get this team prepared uh, for the season. Any more questions? Right here. Richmond Weaver, 1049 Fox Sports Upstate in Greenville, South Carolina. So coach, I need to know, how much do you lean on your players for your shoe game? Yeah. Yes, I lean on my players a lot. 
thank you so much. Um, you know, they do keep me young, so I love having players, and that, that's the fun thing about coaching, um, that you are pouring into them, but actually they teach you so much about yourself, whether it's in life and or coaching, but they do help me with my shoe game. Back in the middle. So I'd ask about Big Blue Madness and coming in on the motorcycle there. Just what was the process with that, and did you even want to take it on the court too? Well, I mean, if they would have let me drive the motorcycle on the court, of course we would have done that. Um, but you know, Big Blue Madness is unbelievable. It's an experience uh, for our players and our staff and just the excitement around it. That basketball season is around the corner. Um, but I wanted to do something fun, um, you know, for the entrance. Unlike Coach Cal, who has the swag and he can just come in and do his presidential speech, um, and everyone loves it. You know, I have to think of something a little more exciting. He just has the it already. Um, so that's where the motorcycle came in. Back up front. Um, Y'all had basically the ultimate upset last year in the SEC tournament. Um, how can you recreate those upset moments in such a competitive league and specifically with the top three that is just extremely dominant? You know, this league is tough. It's the best league in the country. And, um, you know, talented coaches, um, talented players. Um, and, you know, what we need to do is focus on ourselves and what we have to do um, day in and day out to be the best team um, that we can be. You play the game um, because it's, anybody can win. It's an opportunity every game to step up to the challenge. And so it's important to me and this staff to make sure that we prepare in practice so they are confident in games. 